And speak to us, O Lord, speak to us. You are welcomed, Holy Spirit, in this place. Please, uh, you know, just as I say to go with me to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, I'm going to go ahead and give you a few verses of Scripture with regard to what the Bible has to say on the refiner's fire. Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9 states, And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver as refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. Isaiah, chapter 48, verse 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 10. States, but the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthened, and settle you. Job, Job chapter 23, verse 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 3. The fining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold. But the Lord tries the hearts. The Lord is the one who tests the hearts. Psalm. Psalms 66, verse 10 through 12. For thou, O God, hast proved us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Matthew chapter 3, verse 10 through 11. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 20 through 24. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. And we know, Romans 8, verse 28, that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, and I'd like to read in context. I want to read this in context, so go with me to verse 3. The first epistle of Peter, chapter 1, verse 3, reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, listen, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus to Christ. We're living in the last days. God is testing the hearts of each, each and every man, woman, and child who names the name of Christ. If you haven't been tested, you will be. And if you're currently going through the test, you know they're not pretty. It's not easy. But it's needed. 
It's not for us to bow down in fear. It's not for us to shrink back to perdition. It's not for us to go off the path of eternal life, off the narrow way, so that we could take a break because it's just too hard. No. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. God is doing something marvelous to you and in you in this final hour. It's needed, beloved. It's needed. I want to reread verse 6 where it says in this in this you greatly rejoice in the fact that you know that we're going to receive an inheritance come the time that we see the Lord Jesus Christ in all his glory. You know we're going to receive the inheritance just as it says here an inheritance that's incorruptible and undefiled and never fades away. It will never fade away. It's reserved in heaven for us. So this inheritance that has been wrought by the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is in heaven waiting for us. And the Apostle Peter says, in this news, in this revelatory, holy news, we greatly rejoice. Amen? We're excited. Oh, we're looking forward to that day. We're looking forward to receiving this undefiled, uncorrupted inheritance that has been wrought forth through the blood of Jesus Christ, waiting for us in heaven. He says, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Now, some may say, well, who's to say that we need it? Maybe I haven't gone through a fiery trial because I don't need it. Maybe I'm not that bad of a sinner like someone else is. No, no, no. It's needed in these last days, number one, because we're living in the last days. The refiner's trial is needed, especially in these last days, number two, because the world is getting more and more decrepit, more abominable, more evil, and much more dark. We need to shine brighter than never before. The refiner's trial is needed in the last days. It's needed for each and every precious believer in the body of Christ. If anything else, number three, because of the sin nature. Because until we get our new bodies, we got to make sure that this body is put to death by the Holy Spirit of the living God. So that we will continue to walk in the spirit and not in the lusts of the flesh. But that that flesh be crucified with Christ Jesus has spoken of in the book of Romans chapter 6 and 7. So it is needed in the last days that you be tested by fire. It is needed in the last days that you be grieved by various trials. It's needed. Not everybody's going to know. Not everybody needs to know. If you remember in the book of Matthew, in the book of, Ma in the book of Matthew, Jesus states in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with the sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. You may be going through some fiery trials. You may be in the season of testing. In this season, don't let everybody know what you're going through. In this season, it's not for you to contact your girlfriend, your guy friend, your mom, your dad, your pastor, your preacher, and say, oh dear, I've been going through some heavy trials. When is this thing going to be over? No. This is your fast. And the Lord says, do out this time of sacrifice that you are walking in the midst of the most intense, fiery trials that you have ever gone through. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically. The Lord says, make sure that you do the following. Anoint your head and wash your face. 
so that you do not appear to men to be fasting. You do not appear to be men to be going through these fiery trials. You do not appear to men to be suffering. The Father knows. That's the only audience you need to be sure that it's aware of what you're going through. You don't need everybody else to know it because I'm going to tell you something. If you want everybody to know what you're going through, if you want to parade it as if it's your trophy, you have your reward, the Lord says. We have to get this because we're living in the last days. There is an, an inheritance awaiting for us, incorruptible, paid for already. Let's make sure we walk the walk because the day of the Lord is at hand. Let's make sure that we run the last lap of the race with endurance. Looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's make sure that we're not slacking here. Let's, not, let's make sure that we know because we haven't gotten enough attention. We haven't gotten enough accolades that we now start to try to, you know, just figure our faces and put a woe is me out there so that people could feel sorry for us. So that we ha get some attention, some accolades. No, we don't want that reward. The Lord says he will reward us. Where do I get that from? It says here. It says, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting. Or going through whatever trial you may be going to, through. But to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will certainly reward you openly. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness, now listen to this, that the genuineness, there's a, a genuineness of your faith that's needed to be produced. Being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Your faith needs to be genuine in these last days. That's the purpose of every trial that you and I will ever go through. Evangelist, it doesn't look like you've gone through any trials. Watch it. You have no idea. I may come out, praise God, looking all clean. But make no mistake about it, Evangelist has had her trials. And if you haven't had yours, you will. You will. But I'm going to tell you something. It's for the purpose of making our faith genuine. That in the midst of any calamity, in the midst of any turmoil, persecution, or tribulation, the Lord says that in the, in the midst of that, we will be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ is his day, the day of the Lord. See, before that day, the Bible makes it very clear. Jesus himself said that there will be great tribulation that will come across the entire world, such as has never been seen before. And it will bring such deception, such destruction, but at the same time a false peace and safety. And if we're not careful, which we will be in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit who leads and guides us, we may very well go with that flood of deception. Trials are needed so that you don't go that way. Trials are needed so that you can stand strong in the calling that God has for you. Trials are needed so more souls can be won into the kingdom of God. Is anybody hearing this or am I preaching to myself? Thank you, Lord. Many are. We praise you, O oh Lord. Daniel. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, confirms the continued word of the Lord. Daniel. Daniel chapter 11. Somebody may say, what are you talking about, evangelists? You mean God is going to beat up the bride before he comes and rescues her and sweeps her off her feet? Enough. Enough. You've lowered 
our Lord, our Master, Jesus Christ, to an abusive husband? Are you serious? Because he simply wants to refine the body of Christ. He wants to test the hearts of man. Look, we just read it here. We just read it here. We just gave you scripture, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 3. The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tries the hearts. If you don't like it, you may very well be part of the falling away. We have to put this out there because nobody's talking about it. You don't want to be part of the falling away, beloved. You can't sit there. Listen, not, not any of us. Any of us, anyone who names the name of Christ cannot sit there or stand there and say that refining stuff, that being tested by the refiner's fire isn't for me because God loves me. It's for those who need it, but God loves me. No, the Lord says in the book of Hebrews, what child is there that's not chastised? Are you telling me you're a child of God, but you're not being disciplined by the Lord God? It says here in Hebrews chapter 12, the, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against him himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your own souls. The Lord goes on to say in verse 7, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there with whom a father does not chasten? Are you telling me you're a child of God and you're not being chastened? Chastened? You're not being disciplined? In, in other words, you're not being beaten? Come on. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? Nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about the fact that God beats his children. It's crazy. But he loves us. He loves us. Dermot, I'm a, and listen, we got to put this out there because one too many people giving giving credit to the devil. One, one too many people saying, oh, the devil's really gotten, the devil's getting me, evangelist. The devil's getting me, you guys. Oh, I can't help it. The devil's been busy. I hope you've been busier. Oh, the devil's been just working overtime. I hope you've been working double overtime. I'm serious. What you talking about the devil for? The devil's been <laughs> defeated by the blood of the lamb. Now, I hope you stand in that defeat in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you're speaking like that, you're not. We got to get this in these last days, saints. We got to get this in Jesus' name. What child is there that does not go through a discipline? It is not a rat tat 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 tat, -tat on the hand like, don't do that. No, it's a hardcore beating. <laughs> you heard me. Somebody's tripping out on this. God beats his children. Why? It's no different than the way a shepherd needs to beat the sheep, break the leg. He does it. He does it. Real shepherds do that to make sure that we don't go off astray. In these last days, the Bible makes it very clear that there's going to be a great falling away. Why? Because nobody very, listen, the body of Christ has not been disciplined the way they've been called to in these last days. Why? Because they've decided to go astray. Many of them are not even saved. A lot of them are lukewarm. And the Lord says to come back to your first love. Don't get offended by the chastening of the Lord. Don't get offended if you have to go through the refiner's fire. I'm going to tell you something. That's a holy honor. If you are chosen to go through the refiner's furnace. Yes, it's hot. It gets heated when the Lord's breaking addictions off your life. It gets heated. When the Lord is delivering you from strongholds, it gets heated. When you're crucifying the flesh and the flesh is telling you, take another hit, take another hit. Go ahead and do that ungodly abomination that the Lord's told you not to do. Go ahead just so you can find some relief. It gets heated when you refuse it. It gets heated when you reject it. It gets heated when you say no. And it tells you, but if you don't, you're going to die. And you say, I don't care if I'm going to die. I'm saying no to you. That's powerful. That's where deliverance comes. And that's where you'll be ready. And that is where your gold, excuse me, your faith that is likened to gold, that's purified by the fire, will become genuine. Because now the Lord says, that, and the Lord sees, that you will overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony, not loving your life to the very death. And that's what it all boils down to, saints. That's what it all boils down to. The Lord says that he who endures to the end shall be saved. I told you I was going to read to you a portion of, uh, of scripture here in the book of Daniel. 
Are you all right with me? We got three hours of broadcast tonight. Uh, my precious husband, he's gonna be he's gonna be joining me here literally any any second. But I, I gotta finish what we started already, okay? The book of Daniel, chapter eleven. The book of Daniel, chapter eleven, verse thirty-two states the following. It talks about the Antichrist. And it talks about how the persecution of the saints will look like. It gives us a sneak preview as to what the last day's church will look like. Are you ready? It says here, verse 32, Daniel chapter 11, Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. Talking about the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to corrupt. We were just talking about an incorruptible inheritance. The Antichrist is going to cause great corruption, great deceit to establish and to flourish under his rule and reign. And he will be ruling and reigning for a time, times, and a half a times, according to the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse uh, 26 and 27. Now, during that time, it says here, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery, but, I praise God for the buts in the Bible. Thank you, Lord. But it says here, the people, that's you and me, the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Oh, that's powerful stuff. B beloved saints, that's powerful. Those who know their God those who know their God, it says here, those who know their God shall be strong. Not may be strong, not hope to be strong, but will be strong. They shall, meaning will, they shall be strong and they will carry out great exploits. They will carry out great plans of the Lord. They will carry out great resources of the Lord. They will carry out great feats and deeds of the Lord, great actions of the Lord. It's going to be only by the Lord. It's not going to be by our might, nor by our power, but by his spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Now check this out. It says here in verse 33, it sounds great, right? It's like, woo, hallelujah, that's me. Woo, hallelujah. It ain't you if you're not going through the fire. I got to give you some breaking news. It ain't you that he's talking about. If you're not going through the fire, it ain't you if you're not being tested. You, 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 it, you're not accounted among the people who know their God. Because I'm going to tell you something, precious beloved saints. If you don't know your God, it's only because you haven't gone through the fire. You only get to know your Father. You only get to know your God when that God disciplines you. The only God, Elohim, Jehovah, Yahweh, Yeshua. Jehovah is his name and he's coming. The day of the Lord is at hand and you got to know your God in order to carry out great exploits, in order to be strong because in your weakness is when he is made strong and you become weak when he disciplines you. You become weak when you go through the refiner's fire. Somebody may say, no, evangelist, that's not what the Bible says. Where'd you getting that from, evangelist? You're a woman. Why are you even preaching to me, evangelist? It says here. Verse 33, and those of the people who understand shall instruct many, yet for many days, and they shall fall by the sword and flame by captivity and plundering. What? I'm going to repeat it again. And those of the people, talking about the people who know their God, talking about the people that would be doing great exploits, talking about the people who know their God and they shall be strong, the same people who understand shall instruct many. They're going to be full of the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, and of the fear of the Lord. They're literally going to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation, just as it should be in these last days and already is in Jesus' name. They will have the seven spirits of God as spoken of in the book of Revelation and in the book of Isaiah operating in them morning, noon, and night. These same people, it says, these same people will instruct many, hallelujah, yet for many days, it says here, they shall fall by sword and flame, by captivity and plundering. Now, when they fall, 
They shall be aided with a little help. They're going to fall and nobody's really going to be able to help them. They're going to fall and only, only whom the Lord decides to send their way. Remember Elijah? He couldn't even trust anybody to go to him. He had to send an angel to have Elijah be fed with some bread and something to drink for his tummy. He sent a bird, a raven, which is a cursed creature, by the way, to help in a time of need. Where are you at in Christ? Are you being disciplined by the Lord? Are you going through the refiner's fire? It's okay. Listen, it says here. Now, when they fall, they shall be aided with a little help, but many shall, many shall join with them by intrigue. Many are going to be intrigued by the fact that the prophets, that the servants, the last day's church, those who've been through the refiner's fire, those who are doing great exploits, those who are strong, that even in their weakness, even in the, in the midst of getting greatly persecuted, that they're still honoring God. They're not denying their God because they've gone to the refiner's fire. And the Lord says when that happens and it's going to be needed in these last days, count it all joy when you're being put to the test, saints. The Lord says the only reason why that's going to happen, I should say one of the main reasons why it's going to happen is because many will join by intrigue. Simply because they're intrigued, they will join and they will become saved. They'll become born again. They will receive salvation in the time. Of the last days come the time of the great trial that is to try the entire world. Let, let anyone who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord God is saying. I got to end here because there's so much more. Listen, you, you got to join us. Join us on our 2016 EMOAF tour. We have a tour that we're starting in May. May 2016, this year. It starts May 14th. We're doing a multi-city tour in the state of California, Southern California to be more specific. And we are going, this is an urgent exhortation that the Lord has placed on us here at Open Your Eyes People to prepare the body of Christ for the coming persecution. You don't want to miss it. Your life, your walk, your faith depends on it. To be prepared for the times that are upon us. Go to my website, get more information. The website is www.openyoureyespeople.com. Again, www.openyoureyespeople.com. If you receive that precious word, will you say amen? Praise God. Amen. I'm amen with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord.